Hi, Jen Wainer, team leader of the Wainer Group, brokered by EXP Realty. And today I am with Susan Valandra again. It's so happy to see you. Thank you. Yeah, glad to have you guys come back. And, you know, we're going to talk about some really fun nutrition topics today. And a little controversial. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to dig into that a little bit too. So, keto. It is uh, almost a polarizing word. Some people love it. They're like the keto police. And then the people that are like cyclical keto, keto short term. And then there are people that are anti-keto. And I know we were talking off camera, like our thoughts on that. So I'll kind of open it up with maybe my experience and then I would love to hear yours. Absolutely, let's do it. So for me, I have, I have ulcerative colitis. I've had it for 15 years. It was very, very serious to the point that I almost had to get surgery to have my colon removed. Mm. So I went, all the medicines didn't work. I went holistic, did deep dive in research. I tried keto. It was easy for me to follow because I liked the foods and I eat clean keto. So I don't eat a lot of dairy. Um, that's a lot of like eggs, meat, coconut oil, avocado, avocado oil, uh, nut seeds, that kind of thing. Um, there's this thing called nutso. It's like one of my favorite. Feels like dessert, but it's not. It's right. like flax seeds and chia seeds and a lot of that. Uh, so for me, it's worked really well. I definitely know that between that and the fasting that ha and the supplements has helped cure my colitis and depression, which too also goes along with every all of the inflammation that I had in my body. Right. So I know it doesn't work for everybody, and that's what we were talking about. Exactly. Yeah. And so really, you know, anytime you look at nutrition. In this day and age, it's really personalized to the individual. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to have your biggest wins. So does keto work for some people? Yes. Do I believe it's sustainable and healthy in the long term? And when I'm talking that, I'm talking over a year, you know, getting to like three, five years. Mm -hmm. I don't believe so based on the current research that has been coming out. Mm -hmm. Because really, again, can it have a healing process for someone like you? Your story is very inspiring. And obviously the keto was the best choice for you, right? Mm -hmm. because of how many uh, how much healing benefit you got but some people you know we're all built differently mm -hmm. some people are going to digest you know plants better right mm -hmm. and they need to be more on a vegan plant-based type diet mm -hmm. um, some people need to do like a variety like a more uh, you know omnivore diet but maybe they're only eating meat like once a week right or mm -hmm. twice a week so you know in the long term the only thing that I've really seen um, coming from the research that I worry about is people's gut microbiome on mm -hmm. a keto diet now you mentioned you know you're eating meat um and some cheese and some eggs and nuts and seeds but i know you also eat vegetables right i see i love vegetables i love them so much but also when i'm in a flare-up i have to avoid them because of the fiber content right i could eat two pounds of broccoli i love it so much but I know that so much fiber that mm -hmm. like if I'm in a flare up, I have to almost go full carnivore just until my, maybe it's only two or three weeks. I know it cannot be long term because right. it's, there's not enough nutrients in the carnivore diet, Yes, but it would be a short term fix if I'm in a flare up. Right. And for the flare ups, you know, again, for acute um, conditions, right? When mm -hmm. there is a flare up. Keto can be used as a healing process, right? Mm -hmm. But in the long term, because we have all these beautiful beneficial bacteria in our guts, if you are starving them of the fiber and the prebiotics and mm -hmm. the carbohydrates that they need to, you know, multiply and keep healthy, then over time you can actually degrade your gut microbiome on a ketogenic diet. Because if they aren't getting the foods that they need, you can mm -hmm. actually toxify your gut. So that's going to be the balance. And, you know, that's where I know we talked a little bit about this off camera too. Mm -hmm. You really have to create a level of mindfulness and awareness with your own body mm -hmm. of like what's happening. Like what does my body need right now? Yes. And people aren't going to cultivate that overnight, right? It mm -hmm. does take working with someone like a coach like myself mm -hmm. to really go through a process of figuring out how to do that. But that's where a lot of benefits can come in determining what a best diet could be for someone. Yeah, and I know for me, I have not, I don't do really anything to the T, so it, I'm not at like 90% fat. I just go lower carb, higher fat, and I cycle. So one day a week, I am eating like sweet potatoes or donuts. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> they happen, donuts happen, it's okay. <laughs> 
so yeah, I mean, I do love, um, I was on, I did the slow carb diet, Tim Ferriss. So he yep. has a one day cheat day. You go balls to the wall that whole day. And I, I'm getting away from that and doing more cheating on like gluten free because right. obviously now my test shows me I don't react well with gluten. Exactly. So there are a lot of tasty gluten free products out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. And you know, um, there's actually a bakery called Gluten Free Creations Bakery. If you're indulging on donuts, they make amazing gluten free donuts. Just a quick no, I was going to invent that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but really, you know, it is all about balance, right? Mm -hmm. Every Everything always comes back to balance. So if we go 100% all in on something for the long term, you're going to create an imbalance somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So it's really good to hear that you are creating kind of that one day where you're you're going off cycle a little oh, bit, yeah. right? And making sure that, you know, all the beneficial bacteria in your gut have something like a sweet potato to eat and to nourish them yes. and multiply, right? Because it's when people get into these extreme diets, yes. that's where problems start to really happen. So, you know, again, and working with someone like myself or other nutritionists mm -hmm. um, out there, that's where we can figure out what does your body need, right? Mm -hmm. What are your symptoms? What are you allergic to? What foods are going to be the most medicinal for you? And what mm -hmm. diet type? You know, we talked a little bit about how blood type and, yeah. you know, our ancestry influences yes. what our mm -hmm. body, you know, needs from a physio um, physiology and biology perspective. So that plays a part in it too. And they even say epigenetics, like, so you have your ancestry and then you have what you grew up on. Mm -hmm. So maybe you are on a keto diet and I was listening to a podcast with bio optimizers guys and he grew up on a potato farm. So he can process potatoes all day long. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are, are other things that he doesn't process, like so he's not as good with like grains. Right. So, but that's him. And again, like we know everyone's different. So when they see what they can do, maybe a keto diet is going to be great for somebody. Uh, I know Dom Diagnisto has really preached that the keto diet can help people with cancer cure cancer or at least mm -hmm. go into remission. So. Yeah. And one of the things with that, and it's probably one of the cases I have seen keto have a lot of benefits is, you know, in cancer, um, uh, going into remission and, um, you know, getting people, you know, even stage four, right. Um, mm -hmm. coming back. And that's because the keto diet, you're taking out the sugar, right? Mm -hmm. Cancer feeds on sugar. So if yep. you take the sugar out, a ketogenic diet can really help that person. But Again, this is where it has to be customized to the individual because there are different types of cancer out there. There are different things the body needs. There's also plant-based, vegan, you know, raw diets that people have healed cancer on. And I think that also we have to keep in mind sustainability. If you're signing up for a plant-based keto diet, it's just a lot harder to follow than if you were on a just a, a straight keto diet, right? And you could eat keto really bad and just eat a jack-in-the-box all day, but you're keto. So I think we have to understand that there is a big difference between clean keto and dirty keto. Absolutely. And also, you know, you, you mentioned the word sustainability, and that made me think about, you know, the clean, dirty, right? Where, what quality of foods are you eating? Mm -hmm. it, whatever diet you end up choosing and figuring out is best for you, making sure you're choosing organic, you're choosing grass fed, grass finished, right? Wild caught meats, mm -hmm. um, making sure the underlying quality is there mm -hmm. because with anything, be it keto, be it intermittent fasting, you know, whatever you're choosing, the times you are eating and what you are choosing to eat, that better be some really quality nutrient dense food. Yeah, and I felt like somebody was like lying to me when I was buying grass-fed beef, but then realizing the FDA has no requirement on how long the cows have to be grass-fed. Go put them out in pasture, feed them for two weeks, go store them for two months, they're all full of stress, mm -hmm. and they're eating grains again, and then you kill them. Well, the grass-fed grass-finished means they were in the pasture until the day they died. Exactly. And they ate grass until the day they died. Yeah. So I am very picky about my meat. Now it's like not even going, I don't even want to go to restaurants and, and order meat because I get scared. Yeah. Well, and, and I don't blame you. And you know, it's so great to hear how educated you've become on this throughout your whole health journey because so many people out there just still don't understand what mm -hmm. our standard food supply is and what's happening with it. Mm -hmm. You know, when we were going through your appointment and your food allergy test, we talked a little bit about confined animal feeding operations, mm -hmm. you know, and how these animals are kept in cages and they're injected with hormones and antibiotics 
antibiotics and steroids and they're they have a crappy life and they're stressed out mm -hmm. and they're slaughtered inhumanely and mm -hmm. all of that stress and trauma and toxins those go into the meat those go into you exactly and if you're eating that meat right from jack in the box or whatever fast food or restaurant you know then that goes into you and who wants to put that in their body and not only do I not want to put that into my body, but I think that we all should be conscientious about earth. Like, like I am very, I'm spiritual and knowing that animals weren't tortured makes me feel a little bit of a better person, right? Yeah. Well, you know, um, the other thing, right? Global warming, climate change, those mm -hmm. things are happening right now. One of the biggest propellers of climate change and global warming right now is the methane that's coming out of those confined animal feeding operations. Our country here in America, we're eating and consuming so much meat nowadays that these confined animal feeding operations have so much poop from these mm -hmm. animals mm -hmm. and the methane it's putting into the air is heating up our planet. So choosing, you know, healthier organic farms, right? Yes. Um, and, and even, you know, even on a keto diet, making sure you're eating a smart keto diet, a clean keto yes. diet, that has a lot of environmental impact because oh, if absolutely. you're just choosing all that confined animal feeding operation meat, you're, you're fueling climate change. So you're not treating animals well, you're fueling climate change and ultimately you're polluting your own body. Yeah, can and you, I'm I can... so sorry, guys. Could you explain what you know? You guys both know a lot about it. Um, if you can explain, like, any example of like clean keto is like, blah, 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 like co go back to some of the basics on it, so that it's like. Okay, you know, I was gonna just say one quick story sure, about like sure. what I saw about a about like what changed my mind about like yeah. how. Okay, like, absolutely. Okay, and it's real estate specific, so it's kind of good to tie in. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I know. I actually was ahead of the curve. I was actually sold a lot of land back in the day, still sell land, and we were looking to develop. We were looking at farms. And as a mom, I saw a cow dragging its udders. It couldn't even walk. It had so many hormones. I came home to my husband. I said, we are not buying anything but organic milk. Today, we only have almond milk. But back then, before it was all the rage, I was like, there's no way I will let an animal suffer because as I breastfed all my kids and I never want an animal to go through that much pain. Yeah. So. And I bet, you know, that that visual image has to just stick with you. Oh, you I totally can imagine. It looked like it was in pain and I felt for it. It's a, it's a, it's a bean. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So. Okay, now we can go into clean keto. Yeah. Okay. So can we, I know we know a lot about the keto diet, but let's talk about more of the differences between clean keto and dirty keto. Because I can be keto, and like I said, eat a jack-in-the-box, go to McDonald's, go to all the meat that is absolutely terrible for my body, mm -hmm. and say I'm keto. Right. And that would not be healthy. No. Absolutely not. I mean, again, you know, we mentioned earlier, anytime you're talking about any diet, right? Mm -hmm. You can do it in a clean way or a dirty way. So when we say dirty diets, right? It again comes down to quality of food. Mm -hmm. So a dirty keto would be, you're not eating organic fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. right? You're not eating organic grass fed, grass finished meats mm -hmm. or eggs or wild dairy, caught. wild caught fish, right? Mm -hmm. So where is the source? What mm -hmm. What is the the source of your food and is that clean or is that dirty right mm -hmm. and I think you know again things like fast food um, the confined animal feeding operations the mm -hmm. confined animal dairy operations right mm -hmm. those are gonna be dirty sources because those have things like you know the produce is gonna have pesticides and herbicides and fungicides and pus and milk uh, the pus and milk, yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's pretty crazy. In one quarter teaspoon of dairy, that is allowed to have 750,000 pus cells in it from the USDA. Yeah, I mean, as gross as it, as it is, like, think about someone, like, squeezing a zit into the milk. Like, Well, I hope my family is watching this today because every time I go to the refrigerator, I see non-organic milk, and I am like, come on, guys, just this one thing. Yeah, and, you know, I'll be honest, even organic milk is allowed to have pus cells I in don't, it. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't even so do that. So just for our viewers so they know, you know, if you're doing dairy, you're getting pus. Um, and that's one thing that's also pro-inflammatory, you know? Oh, so very. Yeah. If we're looking to reduce inflammation, it's something to pull out. But, you know, again, with the, the whole clean and dirty, if anyone is looking to move toward a more clean diet, whether they're keto, whether they're vegan, whether they're mm -hmm. omnivore, any of the diets, right? Again, it comes down to, are you choosing organic? Mm 
Mm -hmm. which means something's not going to have genetically modified organisms. It's not going to have pesticides, herbicides, neonicotinides, all of these terrible chemicals that build up in our body and create toxicity, right? And also, it's not going to have the hormones and the antibiotics and the meat. You know, and all the all the other crap that we are putting into our standard food supply. So knowledge is power mm -hmm. and making sure people are choosing organics, choosing the grass fed, grass finished, wild caught. And supporting um, the local farmers. Like I feel like it's going to a good cause because even if you are a um, vegetarian and you don't believe in killing animals, knowing that the that we actually do need animals to pasteurize our land, to fertilize our land. So if you have a local farmer that is um, not using all the pesticides that for the poop that's coming out of them is actually fertilizing the ground yeah. to grow vegetables and you're gonna be able to grow organic vegetables a lot better than if you were to just we we're trying to leave off plants alone right no so. and that's a that's a good point and you know talking about supporting local mm -hmm. I am a huge fan of farmers markets like out here in Phoenix mm -hmm. we are so luckily lucky to have our farmers markets open year-round yes um, and we have some that have been around for almost 30 years in the valley so there are some really amazing options and when you go local you're getting things that are harvested more recently mm -hmm. so they're gonna have more nutrients in them a lot of our local farmers are um, growing organic organically so mm -hmm. we get access to this clean produce we're talking about mm -hmm. um, and clean animals too right and then we are supporting a local community at the same time and that has to feel good instead of giving our money to Monsanto <laughs> bingo exactly um, and all of the big higher powers that be right yeah. like Nestle Kellogg right all the things that are owned oh, by yeah. a, a few companies nowadays and you know again it's um I think it helps us going back to that mindfulness, you know, and awareness mm -hmm. and, and really understanding what our body needs and connecting into that. When you are going out into your local community, into a farmer's market, and you get to touch and smell all the fresh food, it helps to build your connection with that food. You know, I think mm -hmm. we've gotten so used to having all of this convenient food always accessible to us. That's cheaper too. Right. Um, yeah, cheap, but at what cost, right? Because in Dr. the Bill's come later on in life got and it. yeah and like if you've priced out cancer lately it's really expensive so you know being proactive with your health is so important and again you know creating that connection with our food again is what so many people are missing and it's something I love working with clients on is that level of mindfulness and awareness mm -hmm. and and how do you rebuild that connection with food and you know even have gratitude for your food you know I was it's funny there is a um, Another podcast I was listening to on Dave Asprey, and I forget the name of the doctor, but she went as far as to say is like she puts good thoughts into her food, mm -hmm. and she feels like when you put good thoughts in the food, you actually absorb more than nutrients. Yeah, it's a little far out there, but then you think about how um, I grew up very religious, and we pray before our food, but also that was an opportunity to be more mindful of the plate and, and being thankful for it in front of us. Yeah, so it, it's actually something I do as well. So I don't think it's that far out there. <laughs> Um, but you know, there's a couple things with that. First of all, digestion actually starts with smelling. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So the moment we smell our food, it actually can get our saliva to start producing. And isn't that when the dopamine gets released too? It's exactly. Like before you eat, it's actually you, not like you know you, the food yeah. is coming. You're smelling it, right? So like mom's cooking in the kitchen, yeah. <laughs> right? And and when you start to smell it, you start to salivate, and your saliva has all these beautiful digestive enzymes in it Ooh. that when you chew, next step in digestion, mm -hmm. they get mixed into the food to help you digest better. So if you are just grabbing food and shoveling it down, your body doesn't yeah. have a chance to make all those beautiful connections. That's that's interesting you say that because one thing I was hearing another podcast, I will try to stop saying podcast, but <laughs> totally chewing your food. Mm. Not trying to chew it and swallow it before it's ready, but like completely chewing your bite of food and being mindful, not like watching TV, but being mindful of your eating and completely chew your food. Yeah. Well, and, and when you're doing that too, you get to taste your food. Yeah. I mean, really, it's a question I ask clients and sometimes they look at me confused, but are you tasting your food? Mm -hmm. And most people, and if you even watch people out in public eat, shovel and swallow, maybe a couple bites, right? And then swallow, shovel, bite, bite, swallow. But 
chew your food, right? Better for digestion. You get to taste it. It increases mindfulness, awareness on your food, you know, and then going back to the gratitude piece too, Mm -hmm. um, praying on your food and putting good intentions in it. There is, um, a study out there that was done by Dr. Emoto. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the water study, where they yes. take the different glasses of water and they, and they put love yes, and then they do yes. the bad things on it. And the crystalline structure of the water changes, right? Mm-hmm. So all the things that had, you know, I love you and you're wonderful. I have these beautiful crystalline, you know, almost like snowflake structures. Mm-hmm. And then the ones that were told, we hate you, you're terrible. Yeah. They're all of these broken down, withered, kind of ugly structures. Yeah. So it's the same thing with your food. If you tell, and most food, even us, is mostly water, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are putting good intentions Mm -hmm. into your food, you can actually change that crystalline structure, make nutrients more bioavailable to your body, and even open up your body to be accepting of those nutrients. So mind-body connection, again, we keep coming back to that. Yeah. I wanted to tell you, uh, because we're on keto, just some of the where I'm getting my fats. So mostly my fats are like from eggs, cage-free eggs, avocados, nuts, um, seeds, uh, meat. And I'm trying to think, um, if I do cheese, I try not to do cheese too much. Cheese is rare, but when I do cheese, I like goat cheese Mm -hmm. too, like an organic goat cheese. So what would your recommendations be on people that are on keto to eat the good fats and stay away from the bad fats? So when it comes to, you know, good fats, I I think you named off a majority of them. Um, I am a huge fan of avocados for, you know, vegans, omnivores, Mm -hmm. keto. Avocados are one of the best foods out there. Um, I'm so glad. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, right. It's so delicious. Um, So that's a great choice. Your nuts and seeds, and again, some of your plant-based sources, Mm -hmm. one of the things I like about more of the plant-based sources of healthy fats is going to be their balance between omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Mm -hmm. So omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. Omega-6s can be Mm pro-inflammatory if if they're out of balance with the omega-3s. I just heard that today. Yes, exactly. So it's important to keep, you know, in mind when you are choosing your fats that you have some of those omega-3 sources built in there. Sunflower Um, seeds. Sunflower seeds are pretty good. Um, My favorite is actually going to be flax seeds. Okay, I do those a lot. Chia seeds? As well as chia seeds. That was the next one. Um, And things like chia pudding. I mean, it's like so delicious. How do you make that? Chia pudding, it's as simple as almond milk, chia seeds and then if you want to put any you know fruit i mean you're doing keto but even some of the berries if you're i love blueberries blueberries, you can blend a little bit of blueberries into the almond milk put it in the chia seeds and then you're good and if you're doing stevia you know a little stevia in there sweeten it up yeah super easy recipe you can make it ahead they're great for take and go meals um but again chia seeds flax seeds wonderful sources of omega-3 fatty acids so when you're wanting to make sure you keep inflammation down right Mm -hmm. and sometimes with keto people who are just starting um even people who are more on like the dirty keto side and trying to shift to the clean side Mm -hmm. more omega-3 fatty acids really helps to um clean up the body and reduce the inflammation that's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, again, I think you covered a lot of the healthy sources. I'd say when you're getting any fat from meat, make sure it's organic, grass-fed, mm-hmm. grass-finished, clean meat. Same with the fish. You want wild-caught um, sources. that, um, And you can even look at different areas of where the, they were fished from to make sure they were clean areas, too. I think that's important. Um, but nuts and seeds, making sure you're choosing organic. Uh, make sure there's not pesticide residue on them, right, mm-hmm. is, is an important step too. And I have been a big fan of Butcher Box because it just gets delivered. I don't have to think about it. I could just pick which sources, the, the salmon, the filet, the um, the ribeyes. We've had chick- chicken, like everything. is. You can taste the quality of the meat. It's so different than the meat that you would just go buy. Right. Yeah, and, store. and I I am right there with you. Um, I get most of my meat from the farmer's market, you know, like we were I'm talking gonna try about. That. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I go away from that, um, even if I go to a restaurant that has organic meat, you know, the difference in quality, you can really taste. You can it's, taste it. It's unbelievable. So, you know, I think that as people start to cultivate more of that clean diet side, again, if they're on keto or if they're vegan or if they're omnivore, whatever diet choice they have, you can start to taste the quality mm-hmm. as, as you get into it. And and that really helps people keep 
the changes to be sustainable because they're like, oh my gosh, this tastes better. It mm -hmm. makes me feel better. I have more energy. Yeah. Right. These are the things that keep us going because who doesn't want any of that? Yeah. I can say that since I've started my health journey, not only do I appreciate food, but I didn't used to be a foodie. Now mm -hmm. I am. I love good food, but I'd rather eat less of it and know I'm getting a really, really good tasty meal. And I love homemade meals more mm -hmm. than ever. <laughs> so in, in turn, like keto may or may not be for you. Mm -hmm. Um, food sensitivity test would bring that out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I had a client uh, just within the last year who was doing keto, had all these terrible side effects from it. Mm -hmm. We did her food allergy test, found out pretty much everything she was eating she was allergic to, but mm -hmm. mostly some of the protein sources, things mm -hmm. like turkey and chicken and lamb. They were making her flare up, and so you think that they were good quality. They were good quality, yep. Um, which again, not many people do that. So I was proud of her for that, but still, they weren't good for her body. Um, and that's where I think again, if anyone's looking to improve their health in any way, you know, working with some sort of professional in the health space, in the nutrition space, if you want to, you know, focus on your diet, is important because we need to figure out what diet's going to be best for you. Mm -hmm. Because again, keto is not good for everyone. Mm -hmm. Vegan is not good. for for everyone mm -hmm. um you know anything that can be really strict usually isn't good for everybody so yeah. um finding the healthy balance that's right for the individual getting your food allergy test done understanding what you're allergic to what you need to be avoiding and then on the other side what foods are going to be most medicinal for you is what it's all about yeah so that's where they come and see you. That's right. <laughs> uh huh. And and I can help people navigate that space because again, you know, with so much information available online, a lot of people don't have time, energy, right, to do the deep dives that you have to mm -hmm. figure out some of their own health, you know, issues and uh, ways to heal. Mm -hmm. So that's where people like me come in. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Is keto good or bad for you? We don't know. It depends on the person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Again, I'd say um, with everyone, you know, if you're out there thinking about wanting to do the keto diet, um, consult with a professional. Make sure you get, you know, an opinion on that from a professional before you dive into it yourself because you don't want to do more harm to your body than good. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Season. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I learned so much again. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Hope you guys got a lot of value out of that. See you on the next episode.